Year 7 Physics. Welcome. Are you excited for a fun learning session? Make sure you have your book and a pen before we start. Today you are going to learn about the ear. Detecting sounds. The ear has special structures that allow us to hear. The outer ear acts like a funnel and filters sound waves towards the ear canal. The eardrum is a thin membrane that stretches across the ear canal. When the sound waves hit the eardrum they cause it to vibrate. There are three little bones in the inner ear, the first of these the hammer is just resting on the eardrum. As the eardrum vibrates it causes the hammer to vibrate too. The hammer then passes the vibrations onto the next two bones called the anvil and the stirrup. As the vibrations are passed along they amplify. The anvil then passes the vibrations onto the cochlea. The cochlea is full of liquid and the vibrations cause the liquid to move. The cochlea also has tiny hairs growing inside, the vibrations of the water cause these hairs to be stimulated and generates electrical signals called impulses. Impulses travel from the cochlea along the auditory nerve and to the brain. The brain processes the impulses and translates these into sounds. The loudness of a sound can be measured with a sound intensity meter and the unit of loudness is the decibel. Loud sounds can damage the ears. For this reason it is necessary to be careful when listening to music on headphones and if you are going to be spending any time in a very noise environment such as a concert it is often beneficial to wear hearing protection. A normal conversation occurs at about 60 decibels and sounds above 130 decibels are painful for our ears. The range of hearing varies from creature to creature. Hearing ranges are measured in hertz and humans can hear from around 20 hertz to around 20,000 hertz. Sounds that with lower frequencies than 20 hertz are known as infrasound and those with frequencies of more than 20,000 hertz are called ultrasound. Different species have different hearing ranges. Hear protectors work to absorb some of the energy of the sound waves. If too much energy is transferred to our ears the eardrum can rupture or burst or other parts of the ear become damaged. Microphones work in a similar way to our ears. Inside the microphone, there is a diaphragm that vibrates when the wound waves touch it. The electrical circuit in the microphone takes the vibrations and convert them into current.